Hello everyone. Welcome to AVLSA lecture number 15, part number one. So today's topic is integrated circuit common gate amplifier. So let's start with the circuit diagram. So here is my circuit diagram of a integrated circuit common gate amplifier. We have a NMOS transistor enhancement transistor whose gate terminal is connected to bias voltage, a DC bias voltage, so that my M1 transistor operates in the saturation region. Uh, we have applied the input to the source terminal and the output is sensed at the drain terminal. When that happens, this configuration is my common gate uh, configuration. My input is in the form of a microphone signal, which can be a small time varying AC signal. Uh, via the register RD, your drain terminal is being tied to VDD, right? And output is taken across the drain terminal. Now, we don't show this microphone signal all the time. In generalized, we represent in the form of V in. So from now on, we will represent a common gate amplifier with this diagram, right? It's understood that input is my small time varying amplitude. I mean, a small time varying AC signal. And VB is the DC bias in order to bias the MOSFET in the saturation region. Uh, now, so next step is we wish to draw the small signal model of my common gate amplifier. So for estimating the voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance. So for drawing the small signal model of the circuit, there are certain rules. So what is this rule over here? A microphone is represented by a time varying AC voltage source V. In. Your battery VB is set to zero, right? Because it's independent of time. Similarly, the supply voltage VDD is also set to zero because it's independent of time. Now we replace this MOS device with a small signal model. We know the small signal model of a MOSFET. So we'll replace that with a small signal model. But while doing so, we are assuming that this common gate amplifier, uh, the MOSFET inside it, M1, is not suffering from body effect. In reality, it suffers, but we are assuming right now for drawing the small signal model of the circuit, that body effect is ignored and lambda is equal to zero. So let's do that. Let's, uh, you know, draw the small signal model. So we'll construct one by one. So input is applied to the source terminal. So we have the MOSFET model over here. Between the gate and source, we have open circuit. Between the drain and source, we have GM VGS, current source, right? Uh, and uh, from the gate terminal it's connected to ground because vb is the dc voltage uh, input v in is connected to the source terminal as you can see input v in is connected to the source terminal and from the drain terminal we have coming out a register rd uh, other end is going to the ground because vdd is also uh, you know grounded for small signal analysis and the output is taken across the drain terminal so this is my small signal uh, equivalent circuit for a common gate amplifier with lambda equal to zero and body effect being ignored. So all these grounds over here are my AC grounds, fine? So let's proceed forward now. And uh, let us try to, uh, you know, now what we will do is now that we have the small signal model, we'll derive the expression of voltage gain input impedance and output impedance. So let's do that without any delay. So we are estimating a small signal voltage gain AV. So for that case, we are assuming lambda equal to zero and ignoring the body effect. We have already seen this small signal model just now. So let us directly begin. Basically, we want a ratio of V out upon V. That will be giving you the uh, small signal voltage gain AV. So since V out is parallel to RD, your current flowing through RD will be V out upon RD. Okay. And uh, if you see from the diagram, can we say that V in is equal to minus VGS? Yes, they are both in parallel, but they are with the opposite sign. So from the diagram, we can easily say that V in is equal to minus VGS. Okay. So next, what we will do is we apply the KCL at the drain node. Okay. So at the drain node, both the currents are leaving. Which are the two currents? GM VGS and V out upon RD. Both are leaving currents. So we'll add them together. So that's what we do over here. So applying the KCL at the drain node gives GM VGS plus V out upon RD is equal to zero. And what was uh, VGS given by? Minus V. 
so we'll write uh, minus gm v in my is equal to minus v out upon rd so what will be v out upon v in which is the voltage gain it will be just gm into rd and uh, this is the small signal voltage gain for a common gate amplifier now remember carefully there is no negative sign it only means one thing that input and output are in phase with each other okay so if a ro is present let's say if lambda is non zero so what will be the modification to the formula for av so av will be given by gm times ro small ro parallel to capital rd which is given by equation number 15.1.3 and uh, this is including the channel length modulation parameter okay so this was about the small signal voltage gain for a common gate amplifier if you have a doubt you can post your queries in the comment section okay so let us move on and uh, calculate the input impedance for a common gate amplifier okay so next we are estimating the input impedance z in uh, keeping lambda equal to 0 and ignoring the body effect so how do we do that we just take the entire small signal model we put it inside the box and externally we apply a test source vx and uh, we measure the current ix and vx upon ix will give us the z in right so while we focus on z in the output of the circuit is not the primary focus fine so from here we have to determine the ratio of vx upon ix so for, let us start with the derivation so from the observation from this diagram figure number 15.1.b can we say that vx is equal to minus vgs yes because they are in parallel and they have a opposite polarity so yes vx is equal to minus of vgs and uh, what what will be the next thing which we will be doing we will be applying the kcl at the source node and both the currents are incoming so we'll have ix plus gm into vgs is equal to 0 so that's exactly what we will do so at the first step we have written vx is equal to minus vgs and then by applying the kcl at the source node we get ix plus gm vgs is equal to 0 right and uh, we know what is the value of vgs vgs is nothing but minus vx if it comes on that side it becomes plus so vx upon ix is coming out to be 1 upon gm so that means my input impedance is equal to of a common gate amplifier ignoring the body effect and lambda equal to 0 is given by z in is equal to 1 upon gm and uh, it's not so evident from this uh, you know expression that it's a low value but definitely when we'll try to solve some numerical that time we can definitely you know if you add the body effect expression uh, the, the body effect and lambda not equal to 0 that time you will uh, you know you all can experience that we uh, z in input impedance of a common gate amplifier is a low value fine so let's move on and go to the derivation for the output impedance z out so for z out there is one difference we consider the entire small signal equivalent circuit inside the box at the same time we make the input equal to zero if it is a voltage input we short circuit it if it is a current input we open circuit it right now it's a voltage input so we we'll short circuit it and we apply the test source at the output terminals here the output terminals will be between the drain and the ground so vx is applied and we measure ix and vx upon ix will give us z out so remember one important thing for estimating z out expression v in is set to zero so that means v in over here is set to zero if v in is set to zero source terminal is connected to ground already the gate terminal is connected to ground that means my vgs is zero so if vgs is zero gm into vgs current source will be zero and how do you represent a zero current source by open circuit so what is left in the circuit we have only rd present so let me show it to you here it is so now if you do vx upon ix it will be just rd so that is exactly what my output impedance is for a common gate amplifier the output impedance is given by rd ignoring the channel and modulation parameter and the body effect it is very simple and plain expression okay so we have determined the expression for z out also so now we'll try to answer one question ki why the input and output are in phase in a common gate amplifier okay so let's start with our qualitative analysis let's just say that your v in increases now what is v in v in is nothing but your source voltage 
So when we say V in increases, your source voltage increases. Now what is being connected to the uh, you know gate uh, gate terminal of your uh, NMOS transistor VB, and VB is a constant value because it's a DC value. That means as my input increases, my VS value and the source voltage increases, but the gate voltage remains constant. So what happens to VGS? VGS is VG minus VS. So VG remains constant. VS is increasing. So effectively, your VGS value will reduce. And uh, we know the drain current is given by Kn times VGS minus VT and the whole square, correct? So if my value of VGS reduces, my drain current reduces, fine? Now, uh, what is VD, the drain voltage given by? Drain voltage is given by VDD minus ID RD, correct? So if drain voltage is VDD minus ID RD, if my value of ID is reducing, that means my uh, value of uh, drain voltage is increasing. And this drain voltage is nothing but connected to the output. I mean, it is actually the output terminal. So that means if my drain voltage is increasing, my output is increasing. So let us revise what has happened so far. My V in has increased. So VS source voltage has increased. Gate voltage remain constant. So VGS has reduced. If VG, VGS reduces, my drain current has reduced. And if my drain current reduces, my drain voltage has increased. And my, so my output has increased. So we have started with V in increasing and we have ended with V out increasing. That means input and output are in phase with each other in a common gate amplifier. And that's the qualitative analysis. Okay, so let's say moving on. So now the input impedance in a common gate amplifier is low, right? So is there an application of such a circuit? Yes, there is. So consider this as a situation. Uh, we have an amplifier and that amplifier input is connected to the antenna. So antenna output is connected to the input of an amplifier. Now, we know that the output resistance of the antenna will be 50 ohms. So there will be impedance matching possible. You can connect the antenna without any problem to the amplifier if there is impedance matching. And for impedance matching, the input impedance of this amplifier should also be 50 ohms. Then only there will be a transfer of uh, you know, signal from the antenna to the amplifier without any distortion or problem. Okay. So such an amplifier is my common gate amplifier. Okay, so here is an application for a circuit. Key common gate amplifier can be driven by a low impedance source. Okay, it can be driven by a low impedance source like antenna. So that's one possibility of an application for a common gate amplifier. And uh, with this, we have come to the end of this session. So yeah. So today we have analyzed the common gate amplifier, a very simple analysis have we have done today and wherein we have drawn the small signal model with assumptions. They are crude assumptions like for example, lambda is zero. Then we have done, um, you know, body effect is ignored and we have derived the formula for the small signal voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance under these conditions. Okay, and also we, if we have seen a, if there is an application for such a circuit, yes, it can be driven by common gate amplifier can be driven by a low input in source. And also we have seen why the input and output are in phase with each other in a common gate amplifier. So with this, we have come to the end of this session. And uh, next time in the next session, we will continue the uh, further discussion of common gate amplifier, particularly with body effect. Okay, and with lambda non-zero. So that is all for today's session. Thank you all for joining. Have a good day.